And I think I'm gonna do something very, very, very sad. <laughs> so many feelings of rage for this book. What is up, my dudes? Starting this reading journey at 10.41. Wow. I wanted to wake up at 8, and I set an alarm. And I just am incapable of waking up before 9. And then I woke up at 9, made coffee, and just sat about for so long. So long that I made a second cup of coffee. Wow. So worth it. <laughs> so I figured I'd let you know my TBR. I am in the middle of the Year of the Witching and the Secret History, um, but those are for other videos. And I also have read 10 books now. Five of them were comic books. Check out my Patreon vlog if you want. I read the new Teen Titans comic books. So exciting. And I started the Avatar comics. Um, the Promise? Yeah, The Promise. I have it right here. Um, so I read the comics to kind of catch up on my TBR because it's October 16th and I've only read 10 books. So your girl's trying to catch up. But let me let me get into the TBL. Okay, I'm just going to pull them out. Uh, I have audiobooks for all of these, so hopefully I'll read them all. I have I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, The Bluest Eye. Ah, so excited for this. And this might be actually my first read. It's... I'm hyped. The writing style, it just seemed really good. And I know there's a lot of trigger warnings. Um, so I'm prepared, but I'm here for the literary experience. Next we have When No One's Watching. I think it's a story that's supposed to be like a thriller and talk about gentrification and it's a psychological thriller. So here for it. Next we have White Smoke, which hopefully I will get the audiobook through script because it is out now. And <laughs> So excited for Tiffany D. Jackson to ruin me. Her first kind of, well, no, she's her other stuff was thrillery too, but I think this is her first horror novel, and I'm hyped for it. I don't really know much about it besides that I've read the first sentence so many times on my channel, and I just laugh at how many um, like breaks there are in the preface. Such a good time. Last two books that I'm going to attempt to read is The Weight of the Stars. Yeah, The Weight of the Stars, which is semi-science fiction but not really i was one of those people that thought this was a science fiction and then luckily i follow the author on twitter and she just kind of keeps telling people like i don't know how this happened but people keep putting her book on like science fiction list and it's not it's definitely more so a contemporary it just so happens that one of the characters mom is an astronaut and leaves to explore space and we are following the perspective of the characters of the kids who are on earth still I have learned my lesson. I will not make that mistake again, but it does talk a little bit about science fiction stuff. It's just not a science fiction. I think I made the mistake. I don't know if I told you about this last week of me wanting to read it, but I think I made that mistake whilst talking about it these last few years that I've had it on my TBR. Correction. Learning from my mistakes. Okay, and then last I have Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson, her first debut. I just scratched myself out. I'm not too sure what this is about and I'm just kind of going in blind for most of these books but imagine if I can read all these books. I just need to read six to catch up for today um, but if I'm smart I'd read more than six. <laughs> I have a backlog of mangas that I'm going to read for like the last day just in case I'm like one or two books behind because I know a lot of my TBR books are like hefty books and i'm like how am i supposed to read all of this it's like why are you a 13 22 hour novel sir ma'am then all my small books there's, there's no audiobooks for them and i am an audiobook whore they are my favorite way to indulge in a book and i won't change for anyone the decision has been made the bluest eye here i go tears incoming um, I also, update, did not cry during The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which is interesting. I thought I would. It was a sad book. Well, it had sad moments, but also very, very sweet and endearing at its heart. But yeah, so I don't know if any, I don't know if books are going to make me cry. <laughs> the last time I cried to a book was freaking The Reaper at the Gates. <laughs> I really need to finish that series. I might do that next week. That would be really fun. But I digress. I'm going with this guy. I'm not going to read the first sentence of these because I have a whole TBR video where I'm reading the first sentence of all of them. So, check it out. 
just need to dive in and read because it's it's 10 40 i need to get into it what's up my peeps so i am now 90 pages in i'm approaching the halfway mark and it's very interesting because i'm not too sure the story we're following i feel like Piccola is the main character-ish, but we're following lots of different stories and perspectives, which was interesting. I wasn't expecting that, especially after the first few chapters was from Claudia's perspective, which is someone Piccola lived with. Like, if I had to explain the synopsis of this book right now, I, d I don't think I'd be able to, because it's just, there's a lot of different families. The, the one through line is, like, the blue eyes, that, like, the ugliness of being too dark, and there's also the difference between being colored so like light-skinned or being black which is apparently repulsive in the eyes of the people during this time or in this book um and it's just very very interesting to read about hmm. i'm just a little worried because um i'm like we just witnessed uh, some animal cruelty uh, so yeah not my phone this moment but that's i mean it happens that I feel like I'm okay with most trigger warnings and things like that and I knew going into this there would be some but yeah letting you know there's animal cruelty but I am enjoying the narrative style I just I don't know I don't know what I expected I guess it's just kind of like this it just feels like the story is kind of just washing over me and I'm wondering if it's going to hit because I feel like when we were following Claudia's perspective it hit a little harder because I could like understand where she was coming through from and she was explaining all her thoughts whereas now we're jumping from different people's perspectives and families um and I, I think that helps with the world view of how black people feel and how having blue eyes is the goal in life what beauty is so yeah but I, I just feel like because of the movement from story to story it just feels a little bit detached from me if that makes sense we'll switch and i'm like who are we talking to who is this character okay and piccola seems to be like the main person in like most of these stories that align so i'm i'm, I'm interested i'm like what's going on i'm also scared of her poor thing those are my thoughts i am 120 pages in and i'm honestly getting very very sleepy i'm like do i need a power nap so i think i'm gonna rotate so i'm like halfway through this book and i think i'm going to move on to a different book though hopefully keep hoping hoping to stay awake by picking another book gosh i'm so sleepy i think i'm gonna go with this one when when no one's watching by Alyssa cole diving in so it's next day and i actually didn't read that much yesterday i didn't even finish a book i got halfway through the bluest eye and i think i read like the first chapter of when no one's watching and then i just got extremely bored which isn't something that i that normally happens to me i don't get bored easy easily especially while reading i'm like normally very engaged but i just felt very restless and then i realized like i had low blood sugar yesterday and it took me about two hours to kind of recuperate because when i have low blood sugar it becomes like so hard to focus and um i just feel exhausted like sometimes i just want to go to sleep and then i'm like why do i feel this way and i laid down for good like I want to say hour trying to like calm down but my heart was like racing and i couldn't think straight and then after a while i realized oh i have a little blood sugar let me go eat something and then after about an hour letting the food digest i felt better um but then yeah i just wasn't in the reading mood after that little episode so i then watched like hocus pocus with my friends it was a nice day but i didn't do any reading and i still haven't uploaded or edited my videos that i have coming out some unhaul stuff coming out i still have like two unhaul videos that i need to edit and just release and do the thing what's up it's the next day so yesterday i ended up having a very chill day like i planned to and it was it was what your girl needed um but because that i didn't finish any books so i'm trying to finish a bunch of books today it's already 1 p.m i've done some work some emailing some things i needed to send off to people and i am 15 minutes away from finishing the bluest eye and i have 
so many feelings of rage for this book um well, i'm trying to see how it ends and see if it makes it better but otherwise i'm like but, but taking a quick lunch break and i felt like sharing it because it's gorgeous so i just have a really basic salad with like cabbage and lettuce like a romaine lettuce and like a balsamic vinegar sauce and i don't have anything like olives i normally like to add a little tomato some some but i ran out so this is what we have to deal with and then for this side this is the saucy side i got a bagel with i got cream cheese avocado smoked salmon salmon's literally my favorite thing um but yeah and then i just put some olive oil salt and pepper on top and i am sure it's going to taste delicious but yeah lunch time i also uploaded my unhaul part three where i i kind of sort through my maybe pile and i'm so happy it's doing so well like i love seeing your guys's comments where you're like i enjoyed this video it means so much to me i work very hard <laughs> especially recently i just feel like there's a lot of people have been finding my channel and enjoying it and i hope that continues you know i love that but yeah side note unimportant my bad she was looking kind of dumb with her finger in her thumb I don't know why I have that stuck in my head. <laughs> mm. It is done. I finished the loose eye and I have many thoughts. Um I listened to the author's note, reread the author's note again and her little introduction to this story. And then I watched a few videos about it just because I feel like I personally did not enjoy this book, sad to say. Um, like I'm considering unhauling it because I think this is a three star book and I'm like, if I'm not going to reread it, why would I keep it on my shelf? But I think I'm going to hold on to it and just like marinate a little bit on it because I know the ideas in here are very interesting. After reading what Toni Morrison said about Piccola being like she's an empty person because of circumstance and how she views herself and how the world views her so the story couldn't just be about her because she wouldn't have a lot to say so we jumped through all these other characters um and I just I don't think I enjoyed the jumping around as much it wasn't clear I would be reading a chapter and I'd be like who is this again like whose story is this why is it important um so I think because of that I lost a lot of the the messaging that was supposed to be given to me and and each character was very sympathetic and I felt like some characters um didn't really deserve it there was there's literally a pedophile in here and a rapist well actually there was two pedophiles there was a lot of like sexual assault and things like that that happened in this book and animal cruelty there was a scene with an animal dying um gruesomely um but I think there was time that was like given to these people and kind of sympathized with why they became the way they were like why a certain person became a rapist because of his upbringing uh and how his self-hatred made him do these things and it kind of makes me think of native son where because of the systematic racism it breaks you and it makes you do things you would never normally do and are you a victim uh of the system or are you all right best or murderer um so it's a very interesting conversation but i feel like native son it talks about it in a very interesting way and they give us so much detail around it whereas this is kind of like here's this man's story and how he grew up in a really shitty environment and oh he became a bad dad and he used to love life and oh he raped someone and then oh he disappeared i didn't really enjoy that i didn't, I didn't really like that it like made me sad and like I just I don't know I think it this is this is an interesting book to talk about but I don't think I need to like own it I don't think it's something I will reflect back on it doesn't make me think the way Native Sun makes me think um which is interesting because this is her first novel so I do think I still want to read Beloved I might check it out from the library because I think it's written in an interesting way but even Toni Morrison mentioned in her author's note that the how the story was told kind of didn't hit the mark sometimes that a lot of people read it and felt the impact but it didn't leave a mark on them and i agree with that i think tony morrison knows what she did i'm on my like third snack of the day don't judge me i have decided it is high time that i finish ace of spades 
been reading this forever um and i'm halfway through it so i'm just going to listen to the audiobook because i do think i'm just not a big spooky reader which is going to be tough because i have a lot of spooky reads on my tbr for this month you will see what i do to adjust because i don't know i guess these books just don't interest me like the who done it part it's just like i don't care anymore <laughs> which is again so so bad oh uh, i mean technically not bad i think it's a good learning lesson for me that i need to stop buying spooky spooky books sorry now talking with my mouthful but i'm gonna move on to this hopefully you can finish it in the next like three hours because i'm gonna get the audiobook Mm. I've been listening to the audiobook for Ace of Spades and I think I'm gonna do something very 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 sad <laughs> I think I'm gonna DNF Ace of Spades I was so excited for this but honestly the way the two characters are being handled um, like, I feel like what this book does well is I think the writing is good. It sounds like two kids and it's such an easy, fast paced book, but the whodunit, I just like, I don't care too much. No, I, I don't care at all. Um, and then on top of that, the circumstance that like everyone, it just feels a little too fake for me. The fact that the head mister or head master doesn't care and blames the two kids who are being bullied um how people are distributing with pictures of a, a girl unconscious on student grounds and nothing happens um the way that there's like threats to possible children's lives it's just like it's really weird that like yeah but they haven't gone to the stool school board to like make a complaint about the headmaster the fact that they haven't told their parents it just feels really 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 unbelievable <laughs> in my personal opinion and i think it's because i've literally been trying to read this book for two months and it's just i think the thing that makes this book digestible and fun is the writing style but then it just gets a little too unbelievable with the circumstance I think that's the the pro problem if you can suspend your disbelief about the school and how the kids are being treated i think then it'll be fine but i'm so <sighs> disappointed because i i bought this i was so excited for it. i pre-ordered it i even got the uk cover because i think it's so pretty um i think i would try works from the the author just maybe something that isn't like a thrillery themed i just i feel like i'm not enjoying thrillers whodunits um and i feel like just the circumstance isn't believable in my personal opinion in my opinion so i think i'm just gonna do nothing because i'm like forcing myself i'm literally listening to it at three times speed and i'm just like going like mm-hmm mm-hmm and it's very much how i felt when i was reading warcross so honestly i might unhaul this and somebody can enjoy this beautiful edition of it but i'm, I'm mad because i wanted to enjoy this beautiful edition so much it just isn't it isn't what I wanted. It's a little too unbelievable for me. The way that um, Jamie, which is this white guy who is best friends to Chia, uh, the main girl, the way he treats her and how she's just so like nonchalant about how horrible he treats her, it's just too much. It might, it's just too much. It makes me so sad to say. I'm gonna go put it in my stack. But yeah, gonna unhaul this. <sighs> Hello. So. I've decided to do this book because out of all the other books that I have, besides the few Tiffany D. Jackson books that I have that I'm very excited for, I think this one has a lot of good reviews. God, I can't trust reviews anymore because even with Ace of Spades, there were so many good reviews about it. And the writing style is fun, so I feel like most people would like it if you care about the whodunit and you like the world that you're in. I didn't obviously but so now i'm scared that what if i don't like this i'm hopeful the audiobook is short so maybe i can finish this book today we will see this better be a good book or I'm giving up but i wanted to read the first sentence to you because i don't remember it off the top of my head so first sentence she woke up to the sound of screaming eee. i'm concerned I'm 30 pages in and I'm already loving this way more than the other books I've read today. Thank you. Thank you for just doing my basic needs. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is a story about 
two girls, one girl named Ryan, one girl named Alexandra, and it's a contemporary book. They're in a small town. Um, Ryan's parents have died, and she's taking care of her brother and her brother's baby. Her brother already had a baby, even though he's 17. He also doesn't talk anymore. So their home life is difficult. They don't get a lot of sleep. Um, they're considered out cast and troubled and the school district they go to though they live in a trailer park the nearest school district is this really nice one so they get treated pretty poorly but now a new girl alexandra goes to this school and her mom is a part of some space scientist experiment where they collected a my camera died my apologies but explaining alexandra's side story is that her mom was part of the scientist experiment from nasa where they gathered young women at the age of like 18 and tried to send them off into space or sent them out to space to travel as far as they could to the edge of the universe so like a 50 year long space exploration um but she ended up having a kid before she went and alexandra is the kid so Ooh, she didn't grow up with her mom. Her mom chose space instead of her, which I assume is not fun. Um, and Alexandra is very, well, she's given lots of attitude. <laughs> and this whole friend group that's currently happening in the first 30 pages, I've only read 30 pages, um, is very funny. They are very much like, I don't know, like your group of friends in high school where you guys just were like kind of a dick to each other, but like still were like real friends, like tight. But like saying like truthful stuff that was way too on the nose <laughs> but yeah this friend group is giving everything and i'm very excited to see how they they fall for each other i'm hoping it's like you know not immediate or whatever like it's gonna take time to develop but i'm hyped i have put a hair mask in but i am 154 pages into this and i think i'm gonna finish it tonight so excited it's so far very cute there has been trigger warning for attempted assault but it's okay he got his kneecaps kicked in so yeah um yeah that's that's really it i don't know what else to say i'm gonna just i'm gonna just keep reading and enjoy that maybe work out hair mask and i look crusty okay bye hello friends um so this finishes up week two of trying to read 30 books in 30 days uh I'm a little concerned. I am, yeah, week two. It's actually a little bit more into week three than I was planning to. It's October 19th. And I only have 13 books read, which is still a lot based on like how much I read normally in a month. So I'm happy, but this next week I need to put the pressure on. <laughs> so we'll see what I can do, man. Oh my gosh. Um, so I managed to read three books during this vlog. Um, and I also have a Patreon vlog where I read uh, like five comic books to kind of catch up. I'm gonna have to do that again probably with some mangas maybe. But let me talk about the three books that I read during this and try to wrap up my thoughts because I am like slightly disappointed. I feel like now picking up every book I'm just not in the mood for some of them or not feeling or vibing with them which I think happens as I am a mood reader. Um, so I think more likely than not when I pick up a book I'm like Eh, and then I move on to the next one but because of this challenge I want to like finish them and review them for you but uh the first book that I read and finished was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison I'm so happy I finally read something from Toni Morrison the writing style was good but I think I was trying to wrap my thoughts around this book because I do think the message is impactful and necessary, but I do agree with the author's note. That was, I don't know if it was just in the audiobook, but um, Toni Morrison says, like, since this is her debut, she wanted to do something interesting and different, but the, like, it didn't come out perfectly, as she said, which I kind of agree with since she said it and now i see i'm like oh that makes sense her explaining in the author's note what she was trying to do made the book make a lot more sense because i feel like a lot of the characters in this book were very empty i didn't get to know them very well and i feel like a lot of the characters were doing horrible things and we kind of had to sympathize with them because of their upbringing because that was what the story was it's like oh this person did this horrible thing and then we get a flashback to uh them being mistreated as a young person so it like i didn't 
care for any individual character i just felt so bad for piccolo who is i think the main character in this book all in all very like interesting i just don't know if it was well done because i personally wasn't attached to the characters because they would come in and out and you would never really understand them fully by the time you kind of understand someone you're moving on to the next story so yeah my favorite characters were claudia and um her sister i forget her name those were the only characters that i felt were well developed enough for our, i understood how they felt and understood their motive without getting a entire backstory from them and the plot itself isn't really important it's more about the uh, the big umbrella thinking of people i don't know if i want to reread it i honestly might unhaul it later i'm holding out for beloved i know a lot of people love beloved um, and I want to read more of Toni Morrison's works because I think her writing is interesting and I think the way she thinks is very interesting. Moving on because I will talk forever about that book apparently. Uh, the next book is Jeanette. Uh, I'm actually kind of very upset about this just because I got such a beautiful cover and I was really really excited for this. Um, there are so many people who love this. I feel like if you like kind of high school drama whodunit if you like all that stuff, then I think you'll like this. I personally am actually starting to realize spooky, thrillery books don't really interest me at the current moment. I don't care about the whodunit, and also I feel like the characters themselves just weren't believable. Specifically, the thing that made me DNF it, and I won't spoil anything, but Chia, uh, Chiamaka, is the one of the main characters, the girl. She has this really odd relationship with this guy who she's always loved and was really infatuated with but he mistreats her so much that I don't at some at certain points I don't understand why she continues to be shocked by his behavior um, because literally at the beginning of the book he starts to ignore her um, says that like gaslighting her constantly uh, where it's like you're you literally don't know what you're talking about that literally didn't happen he would like belittle her and make her think her reality is not right the way he would treat her and i guess it makes sense that she'd be like oh i guess like this is so shocking like i kind of understand that but like 250 pages in and she's still shocked by his behavior i don't get it <laughs> at all and it just really really irritated me because she was giving him so much power um and it's not a book i think that is for me it is for other people who like that kind of dramatic energy the last book that i read that literally made me cry several times like literally like shedding tears had to grab toilet paper the weight of the stars i'm shocked by this i need to read more by this author i don't think it's a five star i think it's a 4.5 or four star we'll see how it has its lasting impression but it just makes you think about love and i and, but also the story is not just a love story it is about not like just not romantic love but also family and friends i love stories where the romance builds naturally where it's like from page one you really don't think they're gonna come together or develop crushes on each other like 170 pages in one girl is like bullying her into being her friend but it doesn't feel romantic it feels like she feels an obligation to help people who are kind of lost her friend group entirely the main girl her friend group is of lost people and she sees this girl struggling and she's like hey come join me and the girl's like i don't want to and she's like i'm gonna throw a rock at your face the energy is so interesting so i just love that the story really took its time building the importance of like their love for one another and their love for their situation like i don't pity you for the situation you're in but i respect that this is something of value to you and i'm willing to help you through this tough time so sweet crying so hard her the main girl's relationship with her brother <sighs> had me crying like bleh, like so many tears i just i don't know how to describe this book besides like love in all forms but i am done blabbing on thank you so much for watching uh this week was a little rough i imagine next week is gonna also be a little rough there's no way of avoiding it, but I hope you enjoy these vlogs. I hope they're fun. But letting you know, if you like my content, if you sign up for my Patreon right now, you get a free bookmark. So in addition to getting access to all my videos that I post there and all my updates and all that bonus content, because I've been on Patreon for like last year, you get a bookmark. 
I'm gonna mail you personally a bookmark and get you a little personalized note so definitely check it out if you've ever wanted extra content from me if you wanted to check out my patreon but weren't sure the bookmark is actually going out to people in the five dollar tier and ten dollar tier so for just five dollars you could get this and access to a bunch of bonus videos so check out the link below i really appreciate it but if not no pressure I will be uploading for free on this channel all the time, so I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a little bit more sunshine and I will see you in the next one.